Hey guys, Marco here from Aviero Live CS. Welcome back to the channel. Today we will complete our review of the Boeing 737-800NG fire protection system. We will be talking about the last non-normal checklist and abnormals. I hope you like it and let's get started. Okay, we are climbing to flight level 200 now and uh, it's a beautiful afternoon flight. The one we are doing today. And we are going to talk about the smoke or fumes removal non-normal checklist. Condition, smoke or fumes removal is needed. Do this checklist only when directed by the smoke, fire or fumes checklist. We talked about this checklist before, so I'm going to leave the link at the top corner here so you can go there and check it out. Do not delay landing in an attempt to complete the following steps. Close the flight deck door. Choose one. Both pack switches are off. A single or both pack switches are in auto. So let's talk about the both pack switches are off, which is not the case for, for us now. But let's review that one and uh, we'll go to step five in that case. We have to choose one. A smoke or fume source is confirmed to be outside the flight deck. That would be the end of the checklist. A smoke or fume source is confirmed to be on the flight deck. In that case, we'll uh, have a caution here. Windows should not be opened unless the source is confirmed to be on, on the flight deck. Establish normal holding speed. Higher speed may prevent opening the window. Open the first officer's sliding window. So this window we have here. Go to the smoke, fire, fumes checklist on page 810 and do the remaining steps. That would be complete this checklist if we had the packs in off. Now, the other option is a single or both pack switches are in auto, and that's the case today. So we'll go to step six. Step six says, do not turn on any pack switch that was turned off by the smoke, fire, or fumes checklist. Operating pack switch or switches and high. So let's go there. Left pack high, right pack high. Landing altitude indicator, we'll have to set it to 10,000. Is set at 10,000 feet. Note the intermediate cabin altitude configuration warning horn will sound and the cabin altitude lights, if installed and operative, will illuminate at a cabin altitude of approximately 10,000 feet. So we can expect that to happen. Let's continue with the checklist. Engine bleeder switches both verify on. They are both on. Set thrust to maximum practical N1 and the minimum is 45%. So let's see how that is for us. So we have it at 77% at 200. Open flight deck air conditioning and gas per outlets. Caution, do not open flight deck window. Keep the flight deck door closed. Choose one, a smoke or fumes are controllable. If that's the case, we'll go to the smoke, fire, fumes checklist on page 810 and do the remaining steps. A smoke or fumes are uncontrollable, we'll go to step 12. Descend to the lowest safe altitude or 10,000 feet, whichever is higher. So in this case, to the right side, we have some terrain, but if we keep flying straight, we are over the ocean, so we can descend to uh, the MSA. In this case, it's 5,000 feet. So 5,000 is set, and we start the descent. Level change to retard MCP speed. So we're going to start our descent to 5,000 feet. Let's read the rest of the checklist. It says, when at 14,000 feet or below, we'll select the pressurization mode selector manual. So let's wait until we get 14,000 feet or below. We are approaching 14,000 feet, pressurization mode selector manual. Go to manual, we confirm, manual light. Alpha valve switch holding open until the alpha valve indication shows fully open. So we hold it in open position. As you can see, it's moving to the fully open position. 
This causes the cabin airflow to carry smoke or fumes aft. It is open. And then we'll go to the next step. There is the horn. We know about it according to the checklist. So we're expecting that. Let's cut out the horn. Note, the outflow valve can take up to 20 seconds to open. And we'll go to the smoke, fire, fumes checklist on page 810 and do the remaining steps. So that's the end of the smoke or fumes removal non-normal checklist. Okay, now we are going to talk about the will will fire non-normal checklist and uh, indications for the wheel will fire are the fire warning bell will sound both master fire warning lights illuminate and the wheel well fire warning light illuminates i cannot simulate that condition here in the same so i will be using the um, folding up overheat fire test switch just to try to see it a little bit better in, in the in the airplane so we hear the bell, fire warning light illuminates and wheel well light illuminates. We'll call for the wheel well fire non-normal checklist. It says condition fires detected in the main wheel well. First step it says landing gear lever down. But remember we have a speed restriction for the landing gear, which is 270 knots, Mach 82 maximum. So let's uh, reduce the speed in order to be able to put the gear down. I'll set a speed to 60. So the speed is below 270 knots. We can put the landing gear down. This attempts to remove and extinguish the fire source. So landing gear is down. Plan to land at the nearest suitable airport. Note, do not use FMC performance predictions with gear extended. Choose one. Gear must be retracted for airplane performance. If that's the case, we'll go to step four, which says when the wheel well light extinguishes, wait 20 minutes. Next step will be to put the landing gear up. Remember, again, we have a speed restriction for this, 235 knots. So if the case is that we need to put the landing gear up, we'll need to reduce the speed to 235 knots maximum. After landing gear retraction is complete, landing gear lever off. And that's the end of the checklist. Now, if the gear does not need to be retracted for airplane performance, that's the end of the checklist. And that will be the end of the wheel well fire non-normal checklist. Few things to consider if we get this condition we we'll, uh, can think about leaving the landing gear extended even if the wheel well fire warning ceases unless retraction is necessary to reach the nearest suitable airport. There is a fuel penalty for diversion with uh, landing gear down and that's uh, approximately 50%, 50%. And we can refer to the performance in flight with gear down long range cruise and route fuel and time so we can enter the appropriate speed and altitude in the fmc to calculate eta and fuel to reach diversion and we'll have to add 50 percent to fmc calculated fuel of course communication is important so we'll need to talk to adc we have to follow our sops remember always follow your company sops and uh, talk to your cabin crew about the situation and of course uh, passengers they probably need to be uh, informed about what is happening okay guys to complete the fire protection system review i want to talk about a few more things first one we'll be reviewing the supplementary procedures for an inoperative loop that's for the fire protection and that's on uh, fcom volume one and also i want to show you this table which uh is uh telling you uh what we have for the detection and for the fire extinguisher for each uh engine for the apu for the cargo compartment and for the wheel well so it's kind of a summary for 
the file protection system. So you can have a snapshot or you can write it down, whatever you want, or you can uh, use it as a reference. So let's talk about the supplementary procedures for fire protection, fire and overheat system test with an inoperative loop. So to determine the specific inoperative loop, overheat the test switches A. Test switch, overheat fire. If the fault light stays extinguished and both engine overheat lights and engine fire switches illuminate, Loop A is good. If the fault light illuminates and the engine overheat light and engine fire switch for an engine stay extinguished, there is a fault in loop A of the detection system for that engine. So let's do the test now. We'll select A and we can see the fault light coming on. We'll go to overheat fire test. And we can see the full light illuminating and these two lights staying extinguished. So this way we know there is a fault in loop A. Now we'll go to position B. And we'll do exactly the same. We can see all the lights coming on. So loop B is fine, it's working. Overheat the test switches as required. So let's go back to normal here for a moment. Select the good loop for each engine. Normal if both loops tested good. So we know this one, loop A is inoperative, so we can go to loop B. And then let's do the test again, overheat on fire. All the lights should illuminate. And we can see the test is working properly. And that's the supplementary procedure for the fire protection system. Now for the cargo fire, if we do the test and we see something like this, you see the detector fault is illuminated and we don't have an indication for the forward cargo compartment. So now we need to know which loop is not working. So we we'll select loop A and we can do the test. So we have a normal test, no detector fall indication. In this case, loop A is good. If we go to loop B, we do the test. We see detector fall, half is illuminated, but we don't have any indication of forward. So in this case, the loop B for the forward cargo compartment is inoperative. And then you will have to select loop A, which is the operating loop. Okay, guys, that's the end of the video for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please do it now. And don't forget to hit that bell so you will be notified once we upload a new video. If you think these uh, videos could be useful for somebody else, please share them. And that's going to help me a lot to grow the channel. Next week, we'll continue reviewing the Boeing 737-800NG systems. Until then, guys, please take care and hope to see you soon.